Hello there, and welcome to another starter video. In today's video, we're going to be uh, taking a look at all of the unique vendor ships in the game and where you can get them. So let's jump right into it. So the first ship on the list is one that you probably will spot pretty early on. It's the ship called the Shieldbreaker, and it's for sale at New Atlantis's starport here, this gentleman here, Anything the ship service technician. So here it is here. So it's a, it's a B-class vessel. It's got 550 fuel on it, 940 hull, 220, two, or 2,280 carrier capacity. B-class with 27 power, 5 crew, 22 jump, light, uh, jump range, 610 shields. It's got laser, ballistic, and missile weapons. And without perks, it will cost you 280k. Now, the thing with these uh, unique vessels is usually they're just a reskin of other vessels in the game. So, for instance, this shield breaker is a reskin of another vessel, which is actually for sale here, called the Warhammer. There's the Warhammer there. You can see that the layout's, like, slightly different. So, the, the interesting thing with these is early game, the unique variants are quite, like, good. I would argue that they're better because they come kind of Bob Standard in terms of like requirements like I'm, I'm the other ones like say for instance the warhammer like starting off the warhammer one is pretty pretty mediocre but as you can see as it goes up in the tier the warhammer 3 is significantly better in terms of performance all in all though the shield breaker is a very cool ship and it's a very unique ship it's got that deimos vibe to it with uh the kind of the wall well, deimos it's got some nova galactic there too and it's it's very bright red if you're interested in seeing a review of this, I'll leave an annotation of the, the review in question, so you can open another tab. Anyway, let's get on to ship number two. All right, so the next ship, you can find it in the uh, Alpha Centauri section as well, or the system. So you want to go to the planet Gargarin here, and then the only sis, uh, settlement on the planet, Gargarin Landing, which is over here. And then you talk to this gentleman, and he will I'm have sure it for sale. Here. And the unique vessel, it is called the Murasami. I probably butchered that. There it is there. Now the Murasami, more, more, more same. I'm not sure. It sounds Japanese, so it, I may be butchering it. So this is based off the vessel he actually has for sale here too, the Zumwalt. Now, the like I was saying with the, with the other ones, the main kind of like uh, pull behind these ships is obviously they have a unique layout in terms of weaponry. So, for instance, as you can see, the Morasami has some of them Scorch lasers, some standard multi-cannons or auto-cannons, and then it has a missile pod, whereas the Zumwalt has a different layout. It has railguns, a singular laser, and it has... Where's the third weapon? Am I blind? Oh, missile pods. So it's, it's basically like a... The only real kind of similarity, obviously, would be the interior and the late like the the kind of the aesthetic weapon wise it's quite different and the other kind of big thing about these is these can be found at level one so when you're i was gonna say when you're straight out the vault but wrong game when you're straight off the uh the planet the mining planet now obviously in order to purchase them you will need to have the the specific qualifications in the piloting skill but it's just kind of handy if you're looking for because early game these ships give you quite an edge some are better than others but in the later game, they kind of become a novelty that you, if you want them more for how they look than actually usability. Because as you can see, so the Murasami, it's a B-class vessel. It's got 580 fuel, uh, A21 hull, 470 cargo. It's got a B-class reactor, 24 power, crew of 6, 25 light-year jump range, 690 shield. It's got lasers, ballistic, and missile weapons. Now the price to purchase this without perks is going to cost you 250,000 and 25 credits. Now, if we compare this, I am max level in the game pretty much, so I see the highest tier version of all ships. So this is the Zumwalt. So as you notice, the Zumwalt offers, it has a lot more hull. It has a little bit better reactor. Um, shields again, slightly better. But early game, you're kind of like you're you're you know if you want a good ship, there it is. It's it's a very it's a very interesting looking ship. Quite good weaponry on it is very good. It's got a good mix of ballistics and lasers, and then obviously it's got the missile. I have also done a review on this vessel. I will leave a little annotation in the video if you want to open a new tab after you watch this video. That that's key. You know, gotta give me that ad revenue. Oh, sorry, that's a joke. Anyway, we're gonna jump on to number three now on our unique ships from vendors. 
All right, for ship number three, we are going to head to the Sol system, which is our solar system. And you're going to want to land on Mars. Uh, you're going to go to the only, um, uh, well, the main location on Mars, Cydonia. And then you're going to come to this gentleman here, this uh, ship service technician. And then Anything if you, you check in his inventory, I'm he sure will have a vessel like. called the Marathon, which is actually based on the mule there, which we'll get to in a minute. So we're going to pop right to the end, and you should see it there, the Marathon. So once again, stat-wise, uh, 700 fuel, 639 hull, 1460 carrier capacity, 8 class reactor with 23 power, 2 crew, 15 jump range, 520 shield, 11 uh, particles, so we've got a singular particle and a singular missile. And the price to buy this without perks is 159,000, so just a little shy of 160. Now this is based on, as you can see there, it's based on the mule. Um, this is meant to be a, a cargo vessel, as you can kind of tell by the layout of it. It's quite a cool looking ship. It's a very unique looking ship. It's it's a Nova Galactic style, but it's got some demos features. I've also done a review of this ship. I leave a link in the uh, or like a little annotation. So once again, early game. This is like quite a good ship to purchase if you're looking for a unique looking ship. Um, the, one of the things with me is, uh, I don't know if you guys really mind it too much, but I like to be a, a kind of a standout from the crowd and having these kind of rare ships means that you won't come across anyone else rocking these sort of ships. So for instance, you might see people rocking the mule, which it's, it's a good ship, not nothing wrong with it inherently, like, but the, the marathon just kind of looks that more better. Now, once again, this can be gotten at level one, but you need to have the, the funds available like 150 K is not it's not easy to come by like 160k i should say so like at that point um it might be more beneficial to kind of build your own just steal a ship and build your own but if you are looking for unique ships there it is obviously later on in the game if you're kind of it's again novelty of you know you want the unique ship because as we can see the mule uh the tier three version of the mule has better jump range better shields better reactor and weapon wise it's just yeah all across the board it just kind of is better but anyway that was the marathon now we're gonna check ship number four all right for the fourth ship on the list we are here at the deimos star yard deimos star yard is here it's uh, orbiting deimos which is orbiting Sol. we don't have to go far or orbiting mars sorry we don't have to go far from the last one so if we come to the star yard here and we talk to our good man, Nikau. If you can't afford our and ship in his here, inventory, excellent. we're going to be looking for a ship called the Aegis, which is right at the end. So the Aegis is, uh, it's based on, again, it's, they're all based on ship. It's based on the hoplite, which I will really quickly just kind of, there we go. It's not too far to look. So as you can see, it's got the same layout as the hoplite. The kind of the main difference is obviously the loadout of the, the vessel. So the Aegis has uh, 800 fuel, uh, 720 hull. 200 cargo, B-class reactor with 21 power, 5 crew, 29 light year jump range, 610 shield. It's got three sets of weapons, laser, ballistic, and missiles. It's got, um, where are the lasers? So it's got dual lasers on the wings, those two ballistics just kind of mounted on top of the grab drive, and that's got the missile at the back. So the price of this without perks will cost you 207150 now, once again, ships available early on the game, but you need to have a B-class pilot's license and you need that amount of money. It is quite an interesting looking ship. The Hoplite is a very serviceable vessel, very nice looking vessel, as we can see here if we jump to it. It's uh, very nice. Now, again, uh, early game, the Aegis is going to outperform the Hoplite like tenfold. But as you kind of level up and so you start to see the higher tier ships, the Aegis loses its kind of its seniority. As we can see, the Hoplite 3 has a uh, better jump range, uh, better hull, better kind of weapon configuration, better shield, I believe. Yeah, so like, again, if you're looking for a unique vessel, Aegis is a good one. But if you're looking purely based on stats going off of like, if you like the look of the Aegis, but you'd rather kind of spend the money a better way. Like the Hoplite's going to be around the same price, the Hoplite Tier 3. Anyway, next on the list. All right, so for the next ship on the list, we are still in the Sol system, and we're going to go to Titan. Titan is uh, one of Saturn's moons, so we want to land on Titan. And on Titan, there's only one location, the new homestead. 
and then once we go to New Homestead, we talk to this gentleman here, the ship service technician. And the ship he has available that is a rare ship is going to call the Vagabond. There it is there. So the Vagabond, it's a it's a Tayo vessel. I really like the, the style of the Vagabond because it's one of those ships where, again, it appears very early on. So if you scrape up the money, you can kind of get it. And then there's like, we've got a lot of room to kind of improve stuff. So stat-wise, it's got a fuel of 50, which is kind of one of its glaring features. Like that 50 fuel will be very problematic. I would recommend upgrading that. It's got a hull of 502, which isn't too bad for an A-class vessel. It's got a carrier capacity of 260. Uh, A-class reactor with 20 power. Crew of 2, 22 jump range. Uh, 685 shield, which is quite good for A-class. And then it's got particle weapons and missiles, which those particles are very formidable. So the price to buy this without perks is 102,000, which is pretty much a steal. Like early game, if you, you get to around level 10, you're at that point where you're like, I kind of want to buy a ship. This is definitely one of the ships you want to buy because it's unique. Obviously, it's based on the, um, excuse me, it's based on the Rambler, which I don't know if he's going to have a Rambler for sale. Probably not. No, he does not have a Rambler. So it's, it's basically the exact same like styling of the Rambler. Obviously, it's... The base Rambler is going to be not as good as the Vagabond, uh, as they they look ex uh, as the same color-wise. Though the Rambler is a kind of a, just a standard gray. Weapon-wise, obviously the Rambler gets better because the Rambler can tier up to tier three. The tier three version, the Rambler will have better pretty much everything. Uh, I have also done a review on this vessel. I'll leave a little annotation in the description. So yeah, that's it. all in all. It's this is probably one of the ships on the list that I would definitely recommend picking up early game. Now, if you're later on in the game and you're at that kind of point where it's like, if you just want it for looks, fair enough, but there obviously is better op op options. Like, you can find the Rambler. It's it's very, it's used a lot by the, uh, the, the pirates crews, so you can kind of rob them. Anyway, on to the next ship. All right, so the next ship on the list you can find in the Narian system, in the Stroud Eklund Star Yard here. Uh, that is, it is orbiting uh, the planet of Dalvik which is orbiting to pallet. So if we come to uh, the star yard and we look for this man have shot and he will have our vessel for sale. So the vessel is called the War Wolf, which we'll check now in a second. So straight away, this is my favorite unique vessel in the game. I love the color scheme and the layout of the weapons. It's very, very effective. So as you notice, we'll go through the stats. It's got a fuel of 210, which is perfect early game like this is kind of the and even late game like that's kind of the minimum fuel you need to kind of go to most places uh it's got a hull of 630 which is pretty decent for an a-class vessel carrier capacity is quite low only 200 it's got an a-class reactor though with 23 power which is more than enough power needed you might have to fiddle a little bit with the power but you can definitely make great use of those particles it's got a crew of five which again is quite interesting for a, an a-class kind of vessel a lot of the other A-class vessels are very much kind of catered towards individual, like, you know, solos. Whereas this one is meant for crew. It's got a jump range of 23 light years. Shields 550 could be better, but not too bad. And here's where that gets good. So it's got particle weapons, ballistic, and missiles. As you can see there, it's got three particle weapons, and their particle weapons will absolutely shred. It's got the missile there mounted on the top, and then it's got the, uh, the single ballistic mounted on the right. So the price to buy this is 225,175 credits without perks. Now this is based on the trebuchet, which I'm gonna see if he has one available. He probably isn't going to. No, he does not have one available. So the main difference obviously, like with all of these ships, is early game, this is going to outpace the trebuchet pretty, pretty effectively. Late game, if you were to pick up a trebuchet tier three, you Potentially, it would be better in terms of its stats, but I believe the Trebuchet Tier 3 doesn't have the same loadout. Like, those three particles do absolute work, and they push this thing beyond the kind of the threshold of, like, how good a ship is. But yeah, that's the Warwolf. I have done a review on this. I will leave an annotation again. Uh, now on to the next vessel. All right, for the next unique ship, we're going to head to the Valo system, and we're going to be landing on the planet Polvo. And on Polvo, you're going to land at Hope Town. There's two unique ships in this location. The first one is going to be sold by the generic vendor here. If we go and talk to this gentleman. Sure so the ship is called the Shackleton, which here it is here. Now the Shackleton is based on the Endeavor, which it's one of the few ships that like it's... 
it's quite unique even compared to the Endeavor. Now this guy doesn't have an Endeavor for sale, but like the layout is obviously very similar. But the color scheme is more interesting. I really like that. Uh, I like that white and red. It just kind of looks really nice. So stat wise, it's got a fuel of 75, which is quite low in terms of fuel. But this is one of the more weirdly, it, it's an entry level vessel in that it's quite cheap and affordable, but the B-Class reactor means that you need to have a B-Class pilot license. Anyway, it's got a hull of 693, which for a B-Class isn't amazing, but early game, it's okay. Carrier capacity of 730, which is quite good. This is definitely meant to be a kind of a general purpose ship, almost like an upgrade, like you've moved on from the frontier. It's got a B-Class reactor with 21 power, not too bad. Crew of two, kind of low. It's got a jump range of 22 light years, again, not too bad. Shields of 1500, which is absolutely astronomical. Like that's the, even though that's a B class, that's like the second best shield in the game. So like early on, if you're like looking for a ship and you don't have all the perk requirements, this would be a ship I would recommend buying if you just want that shield. It's really, really good. Like even the Vanguard shield, which you can arguably like, it's easy to get. You need to do Vanguard questline. That only gives you, that's only 1450. Weapon-wise, it lacks a little bit. It's only got a single ballistic cannon mounted on the top there, and then it's got those two laser weapons. But it's still formidable. So the price to buy this without perks is 130k, just under slightly, 129k, 800. Which, if you're early game and you don't have, the, or even mid game, if you don't have the perks to get that, uh, like the highest level shield in the game, it's not a bad kind of like payout buying this ship just for the shield. Obviously, later on in the game, the uh, the Endeavor can get better, but, like, the shield alone is kind of, like, that's the big selling point. I've also done a review on this ship, which I will link again in the uh, in the video or the annotation. Now on to the next vessel. All right, so we're still on the planet. This time we have moved inside into the Hope Tech offices. So if you come over here and you talk to this uh, woman here, Anaya uh, Raymond, she will have a vessel for sale. Which, if we look at it there at the end, we've got the Silent Runner. Now, the Silent Runner is based on the Star Semi, which coincidentally, eh, there it is there. Vernat Bethel. So, the Silent Runner is, it's a very cool looking ship. This is like one of the first ships I've seen in the game, a C-Class ship. And I was like, that's a, like, that's a ship. Like a proper, like, kind of like, like almost like a Millennium Falcon style ship. You know, like it's got some personality. It's got some flair. Stat-wise, we look at the stats, it's got a fuel of 300, which is not too bad. It's got a hull of 1164, very nice. It's got a carrier capacity of 6060, which is very good for uh, for one of these kind of unique ships. C-Class Reactor, 34 power, crew of 5, 29 light-year jump range, which with that like amount of carrier capacity, that is extremely good. Its shield's kind of lacking at only 975. And then it's got uh, two particle turrets uh, mounted on the, uh, the winglets there, which they're quite handy because this ship isn't as agile as some of the other ships. It's handy having those turrets just to kind of cover your rear when you're flying. And then it's got that missile tube there at the front. Now, the price to buy this without perks is 390000 so just 10k shy of 400k, which is uh, a bit on the pricey side. This is definitely more of a ship where if you're looking for an endgame vessel, it's very unique looking. Now, if we compare it uh, to the to the Star Semi, so this is another one of those ships that you can only buy. So there's no like tier like um, there's no like multiple tier ships of the Star Semi. Let me just double check that so that I don't come. Yeah, so there's there's only the, they're basically the same ship. Now the the main kind of difference is, as you can tell, is the Star Semi is like a lot cheaper obviously and the reactor is not as good and the jump range everything in general like this is like a straight like like not improve or not improve like a downgrade so yeah so like this is one of the few ships that the where the unique one will outpace the normal version although technically they're both unique in that they're both available for sale but yeah i have done a review on this vessel also which i will link in the description not the description the uh, like the top right corner onto the next vessel all right so for the next ship on the list we are in the cheyenne system the home of the free star collective and we are on the planet aquila and we are going to aquila city once we get to aquila city we're going to talk to the ship service technician here 
got anything you need to offload? And the ship Trade he has for sale that I'm is sure the unique one like. is called, let me show you, it's right here at the end. It is called the Stronghold. Now this is a very cool looking ship. It's got, it is a Hope Tech vessel. It's got some Nova Galactic to it, but it's very, very kind of unique vibes to it. It's got those big fuel tanks. So this is based on, I don't know if they have one here. No, they don't have one for sale here, but it's based on the uh, Highlander, which Highlander, again, it's it's similar, exact same layout. Color scheme is a little more duller. And then the weapon layout's a little bit different. So if we look at the stats of the vessel, it's got a fuel of 2200, which is absolutely astronomical. That amount of fuel is kind of overkill in the current setting of the game, but in a future update, when they eventually get around to adding survival mode, that extra fuel could come in very handy. It's also got a hull of uh, 1047, which isn't too bad for a C-class vessel. It's not the best though. It's got a carrying capacity of 2360, which again is quite good. It's got a C-class reactor, 27 power, crew of six, jump range of 30 light years, which with that amount of carrying capacity and fuel, that is amazing. It's got a shield of 1600. It has the best shield in the game, which is a big, big improvement big plus and then it's got uh, laser weapons and ballistic weapons it's got those two ballistic weapons they are turreted ballistic weapons mounted on the front now it, it's a bit of a weird kind of configuration i don't know why bethesda chose to put the two turreted weapons on the front there when they have very little kind of like area of attack Whereas if they had have swapped them, oh, there's also turrets, laser turrets on the back. I apologize, both turreted. But yeah, it's just it's it's a weird setup. If it was if it was me, I probably would have put the uh, the la or the ballistic turrets on the maybe on the front landing gear there, or even on the back where those see where those two little antenna things are. So the price of this without perks is four hundred thousand. Now, much like the uh, the case of the last ship we were looking at, the um, the Silent Runner, um, this ship is going to be like a straight improvement off of its uh, counterpart because to my knowledge I do not believe there is a like a non with the Highlander there's no like tiering system for the Highlander it's another ship that I'm just going to double check oh no I, I take it back there is multiple versions of the Highlander okay I apologize uh, giving you false information so the main difference obviously I just pulled up the Highlander stats like early entry level the Highlander 1 is going to be weaker than the Stronghold but later on, if you get around to getting the Highlander 3, the Highlander 3 comes with a 40 uh, reactor, which is, it's 13 better than that. It's the best reactor in the game. It also comes, the shields are less, interestingly, and it has three sets of weapons as opposed to two. So it adds a pair of particle weapons to it, which is quite interesting. And then the hull is improved. So once again, early level, and by early level, I mean like getting C-class a C-class vessel early on, you'll probably be like in your mid thirties, mid twenties, late thirties, potentially. Um, this is good if you like the look of the ship and if you want that high end shield. But if you're kind of at that point where like, you're like me, you're like level hundred plus and you're looking for this ship and you're like, I really like this ship. You're better off just trying to find a Highlander three. It's going to be more bang for your buck. Now the Highlander three is going to be quite expensive at almost 600,000 credits, but you're getting a better reactor uh, you're getting a better jump drive, better weapons layout, better hull. But yeah, that was this ship. We're going to jump on to the next ship on the list now. All right, so for the next two ships, we're in uh, the Voli system. Uh, and then we're going to land on the planet Voli Alpha. And we're going to Neon, the only place on this planet. And for the first ship of this planet that's unique, we're going to go to the ship service technician. He's in this little hut here. Hey, and we're going to talk to him. And the um, ship he will have for sale that is unique is here at the end. It's called the War Horse. Now, the War Horse is based on the Mustang, which is a Nova Galactic vessel. So, if we look at the stats of this bad boy, it's got uh, fuel at 200, hull of 548, carrier capacity of 675, A class reactor, 28 power, 2 crew, 15 light air jump range, 550 shield, 8 laser. 18 particle and 42 missiles so it's basically got two lasers on the front there a single particle on the side of the uh, cockpit and then a missile now the price to buy this without perks is let me just double check is 132,000 so it's not too expensive 
Now, if we look at its kind of its its companion or the not its companion, the ship it, it is based off the Mustang. Early on, the Mustang is is pretty weak in terms of like just its setup. Like this is better clearly, but if we start looking at say for instance the uh, the Mustang Tier Three, the Mustang Tier Three has a weaker reactor. Um, it's got uh, a stronger shield. The shield is seven fifteen. And it trades out its ballistic weapons and instead has just the lasers and the particles. So all in all, this is one of the few ships where the Warhorse is going to be better, unless you want a better shield. So yeah, now we're going to check out the other unique vessel on uh, Neon. Alright, so once again, we are still in the Voli system and we're still on Voli Alpha on Neon. So... We're going to go to the Tayo Astroneering um, wing or the level of the Ryujin Tower in order to get here. Once you kind of enter the main complex at Neon, the main little kind of market center, you take a left and it's at the very end of kind of the market area. You take the elevator up and you talk to Veronica. It's so nice to have you here. And uh, Veronica Fantastic. has a vessel for sale called the, the Narwhal, which she's a lot of ships for some reason. So this is the Narwhal. Now the Narwhal is based on the Orca. And this is again this is one of the only ships where it's it's it has cosmetic changes that make it different so like if we look for an orca real quick it's gonna take a minute this is gonna be very fiddly there's another narrow one for some reason my uh my inventory duplicated with uh, this i don't know why uh, come on i know there's an orca here there's another narrow <laughs> you don't have an orca are you serious there we go so as you can see there, like the, the Orca, uh, this is the tier three version. It doesn't, the main kind of difference is it doesn't have that kind of front prow that the Narwhal does. The Narwhal has that kind of front prow and it's like slightly different layout, which again is quite interesting because like most of these vessels, like all of these vessels, the like the unique versions or even with regards to the, um, like the Spacer or the uh, like uh, Crimson Fleet or the Ecliptic or the Varun, they usually keep the exact same material, whereas this one doesn't. So if we look at the stats, it's got a fuel of 560, which is quite good. It's got a hull of 2118, which is very good. It's got a carrier capacity of 1760, which is quite impressive. C-class reactor, 36 power. Now the reactor lets you down a bit, but the reason the reactor is, is, is not a uh, level four, or 41 is because I believe uh, this reactor gives more hull, which is where the, the hull comes from. Crew is seven, which is really, really nice. It's got a jump range of 30 light years. Again, very nice for a kind of a ship that's combat oriented, but can still carry cargo. The shields kind of let it down slightly. It's only got 995 shields, uh, but it's got three sets of weapons. It's got laser weapons, two laser turrets mounted on the front there. It's got two ballistic, they're rail guns mounted on that little Nova kind of uh, prow. And then it's got a missile pod mounted on the front. Now, to buy this without perks, it's 455000 which is quite expensive. But if you're the sort of player where you don't really like to fiddle too much with, um, with like, ships, this is kind of, and you like a kind of a combat-heavy ship with a little bit of hauling and stuff, this would be the ship I would recommend going for. It's quite unique. I like the color scheme and everything. Now, if we compare it to the Orca, in my case, the Orca 3, You'll know the if we look at the stats, uh, it's got the fuel is um, a little bit. No, the fuel's the same. Its hull is a lot lacking. It's got like almost half as much hull. It's got uh, 1300 instead of 20, 2100. Cargo is the same. Reactor is slightly, it's one higher reactor, one less crew. Jump range is the same. The shields are kind of the big improvement on this vessel. And then if we look at the the layout of the weapons so they have opted to have the missile pod on the side and then all of the kind of the turrets are mounted it's got three uh not sorry it doesn't have three turrets they have turreted ballistic instead of turreted or uh lasers and then they've got a single laser so like once again this is one of those situations where the the unique ship is intrinsic or it is inherently better the only real kind of thing with this is the shield is weaker. If I if I was rec or if you were going to buy this vessel, I would definitely recommend ripping that shield off and putting on an Assurance 1800 just to get that shield up to 15 or 1600. With that level of shield and that level of hull, this bad boy will take a lot of abuse before it goes down. Uh, like all these other ships, I have done a review on the vessel, so I leave a little link in the uh, top right corner. All right, so here we are on uh, Paradiso. 
So Paradiso is in the Parima system. And then here we have Parima 2. You come here and we have Paradiso here. And we're going to talk to this gentleman Got here, the purple man on the landing Trader. pad. Anything I can help you with? And he's going to have a unique sure ship that is called Abyss Trekker. Now this is, this is a very, very cool looking ship. I'm a huge fan of it. It's very unique in its styling. It's uh, it's mainly uh, Stroud Eklund, but it's got some demo stuff to it. Uh, if we look at the stats of the vessel, it's got a fuel of 950, which is very, very nice. Like, that's a lot of fuel. It might be slightly unnecessary fuel, but still, you know, it's nice to have a bit of fuel. It's got a hull of 1,031, which isn't amazing, but it's not too bad. The cargo is kind of lacking at only 340. And then for the reactor, we got a C-class reactor with 27 power. Now, that power is extremely low. We've got a crew of six, jump range of 25 light years. We've got a shield of 850, which is kind of not... It's kind of lower on... Like, there's some A-class shields that are that level. It's got three sets of weapons. It's got uh, particle turrets mounted there, or particle weapons mounted at the front. Now, those particles are pretty beefy. Even though it says in the red, they're very good. And then it's got a single ballistic turret mounted on the back there, that little spine. And then it's got a missile paw. Oh, no, it's got two turrets. I apologize. It's got a turret mounted underneath. That's one of the few ships I've seen with a turret underneath. And then it's got the missile pod. Now, the price to buy this without perks is going to cost you 365k. Um, this this uh, ship being based on the civilian shuttle or the civ shuttle. Now, the main difference is early game, the Abyss Trekker is going to definitely take the lead in terms of, you know, the setup. But if we take a look at the Tier 3 Civ Shuttle, the hull is slightly better at 1,222 as opposed to 1,000. Cargo stays the same. It's got a Reactor 32, which improvement of 5 is not a huge improvement. Jump range jumps up to 30 light years, which is quite nice. Shield again at 10 or 1,095, bit of an increase. And then it only has two sets of weapons. It only has particles and uh, missiles. It drops out the ballistics. Uh, and the price range, it's about the same. So all in all, the the Trekker is kind of... I would stick with the, the Abyss Trekker just because, you know, it looks really nice. Now, being a C-Class, I have done a review on this. Um, if you want to check it out, I'll put the annotation. The main kind of difference with this, or the main thing with this ship I would probably recommend, like with the other one, uh, the previous one, is I would recommend upgrading that shield as soon as you can, because 850 shield for a C-Class vessel is kind of a travesty. But yeah, let's, let's get on to the next ship. Alright, so this one is kind of out of the way. So... This is on the in the system Ixel, or I, I, I believe I'm pronouncing that. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. It's quite far out. It's way off to like the top right. There's Cricks over there. And then at Ixel, you want to go to the planet here. This is Ixel 2. And then on the planet, we have a area called the Elos, Elios Retreat. This is a cool quest line here. I recommend coming here anyway, but... The vessel we are going to be looking at, uh, if we, when you land, just to kind of confirm, when you land off to the right here, a little kind of ship builder, and we talk hey, to this gentleman, and the ship he has for sale sure is like. called the the Wanderlust. There it is there. So the Wanderlust is based on the Roanoke, which is an interesting ship in itself. So as you can see, it's it's a Stroud Eklund vessel, very cool vessel. I quite like the color scheme. A lot of the Unique ships generally have a kind of a more kind of like either it's it's like a white or a red or like a black. I quite like this two tone kind of like khaki yellow and then like a kind of a sage green. So it's got a fuel of 400, a uh, hull of 1228, carrier capacity of 2375, which is very good. Now the reactor starts to lack here, so it's only got a 16 class or B class reactor with 16 power. Crew of four, which is kind of low considering how big this ship is. It's got a low jump range again of 21 light years, and it's got a shield of 610, and it's got a set of three particle turrets there. So now the price to buy this without perks is 165,000. So like it's it's kind of a cheap ship. If you're looking for like a big kind of ship where you want to like, let's say you're the sort of person where you don't really want to like have to worry about like building a new ship from scratch. You could buy this and modify it. You notice how it has a 3x2 uh, module there, habitat at the front. And then we've got some 3x1s some there. 
Now, if we compare this to its its kind of its original ship, the Roanoke, we look at the tier three version of the Roanoke. So just looking at the, the stats, the Roanoke three has a, a hull of 1100. So the hull of the Wanderlust is better. Cargo is the same. The reactor jumps up to 31 with the, uh, the tier three Roanoke. So it's a huge improvement. Crew of four is the same. Jump range goes up to 25 light years, which is not a huge improvement. Shield jumps up to 975, so that's kind of a big improvement. And then it has the same, it only has particle weapons, particle turrets. And that one will set you back 324,000 out perks. So like all in all, the only real kind of issue I would have with this ship is the reactor. Uh, the, so the, you can see the reactor there. I would pull that reactor out and replace it with a better one. And then um, with the shield again, I would rip that shield out and put a better shield. If you've done the Vanguard quest line, you can slap a Vanguard shield there. Uh, I have also done a review of this vessel if you want to check the little link in the top right. Anyway, on to the final ship of the list. All right, so finally, if you this this last ship, it's kind of a weird one. So in order to unlock this ship, um, you need to have completed the Crimson Fleet quest line and sided with the fleet. And then once you side with the fleet, if you come to the key station, and once you come to there, you talk to Jasmine. Nev and I and uh, quiet you ask her, uh, helping with the ships, and then you ask to see her ships, she will have a unique it. ship at the end called the Hellhound. Now, the Hellhound is based on the, um, the Ghost, the Crimson Ghost, which is in turn based on the Watchdog, I believe. It's kind of interesting in that you're not really told that you unlock this vessel, and it's one of the only ones where you like unlock a vessel, but you still have to purchase it. So if we look at the stats real quick, it's got a fuel of 350, which is quite good. It's got a hull of 726. For an A-class, that's not too bad. Uh, it's got a carrier capacity of 760. Again, that's quite good. A-class reactor with 26 power. For an A-class, that is quite good. Now, it's not the best reactor, but it's quite good. Uh, crew of 2. Jump range is kind of lacking at 17 light years. It's got a shield of 650, which isn't too bad. Now, it's weaponry. It's kind of armed up the wazoo. So it's it's got lasers and ballistics. It's got three of those lasers, those Scorch. I believe they're the Scorch lasers. And then it's got two of those little kind of mini uh, cannons. The price to purchase this without perks is 250k, which is kind of, it's kind of a bit pricey. Now, if we compare it to the Ghost, if we look at the Tier 3 version or the Tier 4 version of the Ghost, which was what we were looking for. So and early, early on, if you... Which I say early on, but if you're doing the Crimson Fleet missions you're going to have a lot of ships at your disposal anyway because you know you can seal ships anyway so the tier 4 ghost uh has a hull of 834 so a little bump in hull it's got a reactors 29 reactor instead of 26 again bit of a bump it's crew, got a crew of four which is an improvement jump range is 17 27 light years instead of 17 so an extra 10 light years shield of 810 now the the ghost uh, tier four ghost has ballistic la and lasers as well, similar kind of configuration, and then the price of the Crimson Fleet ghost is three hundred and one thousand without perks. So if you're going for again, if you're going for unique ships, this is obviously a very cool ship, and it's the sort like it's it's very unique in that like it's basically a reward you get for doing the Crimson Fleet, which is kind of hilarious because like, thanks for doing the Crimson Fleet, you unlocked a ship, but you gotta pay us for it, which is like lol. But like if you if you just like the aesthetic of this ship, you could definitely just come across a Ghost 4, Tier 4. They're very common, and then like it costs you nothing, and then you can upgrade it. But yeah, that's that's all of the uh, unique ships in the game. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I have done a review of this ship and all the ships uh, in the video. I will, if you look in the top right of each, I should put little annotations to all of the videos. Um, make sure to watch this video fully first though before clicking on them. Anyway, I uh, hope you guys have a good day. Don't forget to check out some of my other videos and subscribe if you like this content. Bye-bye.